Are you a .NET developer and curious about cloud computing and AWS in general? Well, you come to the right place. In this video, I'll be walking through what cloud computing is and how Amazon Web Services can make the life of a .NET developer better. Hey folks, I know as .NET developers, there's a lot of things we need to be paying attention to. What are all the new happenings in .NET? And after we build our apps, where do we want to host them? I want to talk about Amazon Web Services and how it can be a great option to deploy your .NET apps to. Well, to start, let's talk about some of the pillars of cloud computing and how they can be a better option than hosting apps on-prem. To start, cloud computing has this idea of pay-as-you-go, which simply means you're only financially responsible for the computing resources you use. This allows you to freely create and commission services without incurring some cost of ownership. You also benefit from massive economies of scale, since the cloud consists of not just your resources, but all resources from hundreds and thousands of customers. You're able to scale at a higher rate than you would on your own. This also translates into lower pay-as-you-go prices. You also have an opportunity to be more agile, no longer dependent on the provisioning of physical or virtualized infrastructure and the time that may take. IT resources is only a click away, which means your request to create a new database or virtual machine goes from weeks to minutes. This empowers you as a developer to experiment with new ideas and how to bring value to the business. The opportunity to realize cost savings is huge. Companies can go from focusing on maintaining all this infrastructure to driving innovation for the business. And finally, you have the opportunity to go global in minutes. Applications can be deployed in multiple regions around the world with a few clicks. This means that you can provide lower latency and a better experience for your customers at a minimal cost. So let's talk a little bit about some of the architecture options that we have based on our needs. So when we're building apps, we have a plethora of options for what we're going to build. But we also have a ton of options as it pertains to what kind of infrastructure, what kind of services we want to deploy to. To start out, we have this opportunity of service models, right? So depending on how you want to deploy your app, you can deploy to infrastructure as a service. This is like a VM or um, you know, a, a virtualized environment that, you know, you own the operating system, you own the Windows patching, you own the Linux updates. This allows you to have full flexibility and flow configuration, full control over your your deployment environment. Next step up, which has an obfuscated view of the operating system is platform as a service. And this gets you all sorts of great experience because you can focus on your app, not as much about the infrastructure that you're building. And then finally, for a completely obfuscated view, we have this idea of software as a service, which basically means you use a service and you don't care about anything underneath the hood. Like for instance, like, an e like your email, right? We don't care about you know, what the VMs are being hosted or how much memory are on those VMs. We're just checking our email. We're just using that software as a service. We also need to consider some of the different architectures that exist in the landscape today. Everybody cares about microservice architecture these days, and it's really, really important to think about do I have a solution or have I built an app that needs to be set up in a microservice type of way? And finally, maybe your app doesn't need a server at all. There are servers running underneath the hood for serverless, but at the end of the day, we don't care about all that. We just have a small piece of code that needs to run. And with that, it allows us to be flexible in how we deploy our applications. AWS is a cloud provider with over 200 services that exist, you know, ranging from compute options to database, networking, communication, everything under the hood. And it's really, really great because it just gives you the flexibility for what you're trying to accomplish. And there's data centers available globally all around the world, and they provide an option every level of the cloud journey. So platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, and everything in between. And finally, there's an extensive free tier of at AWS, so you can play around with some of the services and really figure out if it's a great option for what you're trying to accomplish. And just to showcase, you know, where the footprint of AWS is, there's regions everywhere, and there's new ones spinning up daily. It's really, really important to think about how this can bring value to your business because you can connect with your customers almost immediately. Having access to this global infrastructure allows you to bring value to your customers no matter where they are. So. And even with that infrastructure in mind, we developers care very much about code. Infrastructure as code, or IAC, allows you to write code that represents all the things your app needs to run. Implementing IAC allows you to build a reusable process for building out your environments. And CloudFormation is an AWS service that allows you to define your AWS resources needed for your app as a template. For instance, an Amazon EC2 VM or an Amazon RDS database. So you can configure those resources for you. 
this allows you to have that reusability from an infrastructure perspective. So you have to create new items manually every time. And the best part is since these templates are actual files, you can check them into source control and we have a mechanism to control and track changes at our own infrastructure. You can write CloudFormation templates using JSON or YAML, and there are a ton of available templates to get started. Once you have a template that you want to create, you can simply deploy your stack via the AWS console, the CLI, or via the APIs. And you can monitor the progress of your stack creation and then complete it. Use those resources accordingly. You can also choose to programmatically create your AWS resources as well. The AWS Cloud Development Kit, our CDK for short, allows you to write code that defines that cloud infrastructure, how it works if you obtain pre-configured components that define your app, and then you write code that defines that infrastructure. You can take that code project and pass it into CloudFormation and get all the same benefits I just talked about before. I know that I've spent way too much time talking about infrastructure, so let's talk about some developer tools that AWS provides. Firstly, people first get acquainted with AWS by going to the AWS Management Console, which is a web-based interface that allows you to interact with all the AWS services you create and manage. We developers love CLIs, and the AWS CLI is another great tool to have in your tool belt. You can have the AWS CLI locally on your machine, or you can even access the AWS Cloud Shell via the Management Console. CLI allows you to script out tasks that you could perform manually in the console, allowing for integration with other workflows you might already have that are scripted. If you use an IDE to build apps, AWS has built extensions or toolkits for a large amount of them. And for browser-based web development, AWS Cloud9, which is a web-based IDE, lets you write, run, and debug your code without having to install anything on your device. And finally, no development experience would be complete without a rich software development kit or SDK. SDKs allow you to interact with the AWS API programmatically, making communicating with AWS services more straightforward. So now that we have an idea of how AWS can do and how developers can have a great time building apps on it, let's talk about how specifically .NET developers can have a great time. If you are like me, you spend a lot of time in an IDE, whether it's Visual Studio, VS Code, or JetBrains Writer. AWS provides extensions for all three and provides mechanisms to manage AWS resources as well as deploy directly to them. I mentioned CDKs and SDKs earlier, and there are c -sharp equivalents for both. I mean, you can not only write apps to interface with AWS resources we may depend on for those apps, but also to define all those services in a sustainable way. And once you have positioned these resources and written your app, you can use the AWS Deploy tool for the .NET CLI which is an interactive tool that guides you in deciding on what AWS compute resources might be the best fit for your app. It supports both containerized and non-containerized workloads and uses the CDK under the hood. AWS also has, a built, has built a handful of tools to help assist folks to modernize their .NET apps. One example being the porting system for .NET, which scans your .NET framework applications and builds an assessment to help you modernize it to .NET 6 and beyond. There is also the AWS app to container which is a CLI that generates a container image for your application with all the correct dependencies, network configurations, and deployment instructions to Amazon Elastic Container Service or Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service. And finally, there's the AWS service, AWS, service microservice, AWS microservice extractor for .NET, which simplifies the process of re-architecting applications into the smaller code projects. This can be extremely helpful if you are tasked with breaking apart that monolith. I hope this is helpful as we start to think about the cloud and how AWS can make the life of a .NET developer better. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.